Hello, welcome to the Accountable Kids instructional video. Today we have with us Scott and Tracy Heaton, who are the developers of the Accountable Kids Parenting Program. We also have a group of parents and grandparents here who are joining us to ask questions about how the Accountable Kids Program works. Scott, can you tell us a little bit about Accountable Kids Program? Sure, I'd love to. Um, first of all, I want to thank all the people who have purchased Accountable Kids, um, and specifically you folks here for taking your time out to, to be a part of this video with us. Um, Today we're going to talk about uh, implementing the Accountable Kids program in four steps. So the video is going to be broken into four parts. Uh, the reason we've done this is to make this a lot easier for parents to implement and also so that children aren't, aren't overwhelmed and they get it much more easily. I know you guys have great support through email and the toll-free telephone number, but what other support is available? That's a good question. Um, we do have the 800 number that you mentioned, and, and we love to have people call us and ask any questions. Um, we like to try to support people best we can as they're implementing the program. Um, if you go to our website at accountablekids.com, on there you'll find links to our, our blog. You can follow the blog and the stories on the blog. You can also find uh, our Facebook group there, and you can follow us on Facebook. So we definitely want people to contact us if you have any questions or concerns so that we can, we can help you be as successful as possible with the program. We purchased the Accountable Kids program and are ready to start. What's the first step? So the first thing we recommend is watching the Accountable Kids Quick Start video. Uh, you can find that at accountablekids.com forward slash quick start. Uh, watch that with your family. It's something fun that the kids will enjoy and it'll help them get a visual overview of the entire program. The next thing we recommend is watching step one of this instructional video. Keep it simple, you don't have to watch the whole video before you start, just watch step one and then you're ready to decorate the boards. Now when you get your boards out and begin decorating those, make it a real family um, event. Get some stickers or some paint. Let the kids customize their boards so that it's fun for them. And then the last thing is just set a date to start and you're ready to begin. My kids had a great time decorating their boards with stickers and paint and we turned it into a fun family activity. But now that they're all decorated so cute, where are we supposed to hang them? We've uh, tried a number of different locations uh, ourselves as well as test families and what we found is that it is best to have uh, the kits in, in one of the main living areas in the house. Generally in the kitchen, family room, different places like that to where it's, it's visible and everyone in the family can see it often. Um, we definitely don't recommend putting it in the, in the kids' bedrooms because then the parents have to go and, and find the boards to, to look at those. Um, the kids aren't seeing them as often, so definitely put it uh, in a main living area in the house or just off the kitchen, in the kitchen. Uh, that's what we found to be the most successful. So my kids are pretty rough on things and I'm worried about the reminder cards getting ruined. Do you have any suggestions for keeping those nice? The cards are treated with a coating that makes them very durable and they stay on the board so they really are designed to hold up to your kids everyday wear and tear. Uh, we don't recommend laminating the cards because that does create some other problems with the cards not staying on the board as well and curling. If you find that you have a couple cards that get ruined you can purchase replacement cards on our website uh, for the tickets and the reminder cards. Okay, I know that Accountable Kids works well for ages 3 to 14, but is there something that is specific for different age groups in that category? That's a great question, and uh, actually it's very important um, to be able to adapt a program to your children and their specific needs. Now, you don't need to, to have our book to begin the program, um, but one thing to consider is that as you get going with your children, especially if you have children of different ages, um, it's important to understand their developmental stage, where they're at, and so that you as a parent can have appropriate expectations for that child. And so once you've started the program, you may find that you want to get on our website at accountablekids.com and purchase the book because there is a lot of information in there about the developmental stages so that, that you're customizing the program to help your, your children uh, of different ages be as successful as they can be. Okay, it looks like we're ready to begin step one of the Accountable Kids program. The instructional video will go over the basics of the program, but if you're interested and want to purchase the Accountable Kids book, it is available on the Accountable Kids website. In the first step, Accountable Kids introduces the idea of basic chores, tickets, and best behavior card. Can you give us a quick demonstration on how this works? 
Once you've selected the chores that you want your children to do, divide them into three categories. The morning chores, the afternoon chores, and the evening chores. And then you're going to take the cards and cut them so that the color bars represent the time of day. Yellow would be for morning, red for afternoon, and blue would represent evening chores. Once you've selected the cards that your kids are going to be using, you'll put them on the go peg. And this is where your kids will come in the beginning of the day to see what jobs they need to do. So in the morning, they can come to the board, see what they need to do, and as they finish a job, it goes over to the finished peg. Now as they move through their basic routine and they're flipping the cards over, you're no longer the one that has to continually remind your kids to do these jobs. They can remind themselves, and when they're finished with their morning chores, they know because all the yellow jobs are done. So my kids will come and say, Mom, I'm done with my morning jobs. May I have a ticket? And that's when they've earned their morning ticket. The ticket then can be placed on the Accountable Kids board on the ticket spot, and then they can use that throughout the day for uh, ticketed items such as getting on the computer, playing games, uh, watching a movie, or having friends over to play. The second tool that's introduced in step one is the best behavior card. And this is a fun way to help encourage positive behaviors in your children. They can earn the best behavior card for doing things like helping, uh, caring acts, uh, sharing. And it's just a fun way to tell your kids that you're watching for the good and helping to encourage the positive things in your kids. I love the idea of having a program where the kids can decide what they want to do. With, but with over 60 cards, how do I decide which cards to choose for them? Okay, that's a great question. First thing you want to do is, is keep it simple. Um, you don't want to overwhelm the kids. The second thing you want to do is make sure that your chores are, are age appropriate. And you can refer to our book and it'll give you a number of suggestions. There's a whole section in there on developmental stages so that you can determine what's appropriate um, for your child's age. Uh, the next thing you want to do is make sure that the basic chores that you set up are consistent, um, that that list doesn't change. That way the kids can get used to the system and, um, and have the structure that they need to be successful. So once the parents have selected the jobs that they'd like their kids to do and maybe even created some of their own, what do they need to do next? This is the fun part where you get to customize a program to really meet the needs of your kids. So you can take the cards and cut the color bars so that they match up with when you want your kids to complete certain chores. For chores that occur in the morning, you'll cut the cards so that the yellow bar is on the bottom. For chores that are for the afternoon, you'll cut it for the red bar on the bottom. And things that you want your kids to do in the evening, you'll cut it so that the blue bar is on the bottom. So this gives you an opportunity to just get specific on when you want the chores done and it allows the kids an opportunity to be able to see when to do their chores. So it's not this long list of things they have to do all day long, but it breaks it into three very short segments and it makes it fun and simple for the kids. I think it's also um, very uh, tactile, very hands-on, mm -hmm. um, so the kids, kids enjoy it. We tried to make it as simple as possible so the kids can be successful with it. So my kids earn tickets for doing basic chores. What would they then use those tickets for? What activities? Really, this isn't, isn't overly complicated. What you want to do is, is look at what your kids are into, the things that they like, and, and make those ticketed items. Because that's where really the buy-in comes from. That's where the kids get motivation. is Because they're working to do things that they want to do, not just sort of an arbitrary list that mom and dad have created that, that they think is important. So you can kind of kind of mix it in. Um, things that they want to do, also things that you want them to recognize are, are a privilege that they need to earn. One thing to remember is just keep it simple, keep it fun. Uh, we have a lot of parents ask us, what should I make a ticketed activity? Um, and you don't want to ticket everything. You, you want this program to just be fun for the kids and simplify your life. So in our home, uh, we have ticketed items, things like TV, computer, uh, playing with friends, maybe watching a movie. Uh, our kids don't need to give us a ticket to go outside and play, uh, but we do have a rule that they need to at least have done their basic chores and have their ticket hanging on their board before they go out and 
play outside. So that still keeps it simple for the kids. Um, and for us, it, it helps our kids make some choices and learn to balance their resources and not be spending all day long on the computer or watching TV. Uh, it gets them out doing some fun things. So there's certain chores that I want my son to do every week, but not every day. Is there a way to set up the chore board so that he can remind himself to do those weekly chores? Here's something to remember. The Accountable Kids program is, is a framework. We've not intended it to be something that you're so locked into that you, you can't be really who you are, that it doesn't fit your needs. It's, it's wholly customizable. So initially you may want to uh, follow the steps that we, that we lay out as you implement it in the beginning, but then once you've done that, customize it. Make it yours. Um, there's a number of ways that you can do that. Uh, you can take and you can write on the card uh, if it's a job that's to be done once a week. There's also the purple color bar right at the, at the bottom. You can trim the cards off to that point so that the kids know that that's a once a week chores. There's also other cards in there. Uh, we have a morning, afternoon, and evening card. So if there's something um, that needs to be done at one of those times, uh, you can use those cards. But like I said, make it yours. Make it fit your family. Make it fit your needs. And if you'll do that, you'll be successful.